10 o'clock Friday morning. Did you make that? I, uh, as I said, sir, I'm afraid there seems to have been a discrepancy. Discrepancy? I'm damn sure there's a discrepancy. I've got it written down here that I had a conversation with him yesterday morning. According to you, he was in his grave. I, uh, I meant about the date, sir. Date? What date? If I may. I must point out that you were in fact referring to Friday the 17th. Today is Friday the 24th. Six, four, five, seven died on the 17th and you had a conversation with him on the 23rd. But Lord, you're right. <laughs> Stop standing so close to me! Oh, sorry, sir. Please stand so close to me, Paul. <laughs> breathing down my neck! <laughs> oh, nothing's more irritating. <laughs> <laughs> what is this other business, anyway? Um, it was not 6457 whom you interviewed, sir. Gibbs? Yes, sir. One question. Yes, sir. Are you taking the piss out of me? Most decidedly not, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it was not 6457 who I interviewed on the 17th, who was it? I must point out, sir. The figures in your diary, sir, they're slightly incorrect. See, it's not a seven, sir. It's a nine. Nine? Nine. 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 The number is 6459. Good lord, so it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very clear, man, is it? Well, it was in fact 6459 whom you interviewed, yes, sir. Yes, it must have been. Yes. A death on the premises. Excuse me, sir. So the man has died. Six four five nine, sir. Yes, sir. Well, who is he? You knew him rather well, sir. You tell him personally. Yes, you knew him very well, sir. Well, you keep saying that, but you're not telling me who he is. What did he look like? Finnish. But tall. Certainly not small. But a sharp sort of Quite face. Quite a sharp sort of face. Yes, he lived a bit. Lived in his left leg. His left, sir. Yes, everywhere he walked, he lived. Yes, he had a slight limp in his left, sir. Yes, I remember him well. He's dead, you say? Yes, sir. Well, why wasn't I informed? It's your job to inform me of every matter, no matter how slight, no matter how small, of everything that happens in this ministry. I demand to know, why wasn't I told? You signed the death certificate for me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sir, so, Robert, you know what I did right? Pull over his mind and make sick. You fit? Yeah. Five pence! Yeah! yeah. I, 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 
know, last week, I remember... Why do you give rich people to his bonus? Yes! On, 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 on occasion, I will give rich people big bonuses. Oh, I don't worry, I'm making you all the words each and every single day. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. <laughs> Oh, this 
<laughs> There's no doubt that you know her, sir. I know her? I've told her personally? Oh, yes, sir. You know her very well, sir. What does she look like? Oh, uh, fattish. <laughs> small? Certainly not small. But fair-headed. And certainly not dark-headed, sir. Does she wobble in her left button? Her left, sir? Yeah, she wobbles in her left button. Yeah, she wobbles in her left. <laughs> yeah, it's every way she wobbles, she walks. <laughs> yes, she likes to drink coffee too when she's dead. <laughs> right, sir. Yes, don't think I know her. <laughs> just, it's, I don't mind the men dipping their wicks on occasion. <laughs> But we all know the rule, Gibbs. Never write Burbank and always send in a report. Well, I'll tell you something, Gibbs. Someone hasn't been sending in their report. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> Exhausted. Do you know, he never speaks to me. What? He never says a single word to me. What? I don't even think I've done something to frighten him. What do you mean? You work together, of course he talks to you. Do you know what I learned this morning? Yeah, one of the patients has had a baby. A baby? How? Oh, well, under my very own nose. It's nothing George Primal. How did she manage it? She had an accomplice. Oh, no, who? Well, uh, that's what we've got to find out. What patient was it? Oh, I don't know. Hey, she feels very feminine now. Well, she always was very feminine. Do you think I'm feminine enough? Darling, do you think I'm too masculine? Do you think I could be more feminine? Yes, yes, why not? So you do think I could be more feminine? What? Then if you think I'm feminine, why do you want me to be more feminine? You're quite feminine enough. So, do you want me to be more feminine? I don't, I don't. You just said you did. I don't, I don't. Because it would be awful to think I'd let you down in the most important aspects of any relationship between any woman and any man. You're quite feminine enough. Do you really think so? Yes. On top of everything that's happened today, a patient has died. <gasps> Dad? Yes, I do my neck. And now on the side, we want to tell Charlie. As tricks, Charlie, what do you mean to do with yourself, eh? What do you want? I don't want anything, Gibbs. I've got something to report, that's all. Oh, yeah? What? Actually, I want to ask you something first. Ooh, what? That's 6457 getting on. Lush, if you've got something to report, then just report it to me. I wish she's given birth. Yeah, well, that's none of your business now. We're all concerned, concerned, you know. We're all concerned. Lush, I'm not prepared to have any sort of conversation with you whatsoever. If you've got something to report, report it to me without making a fucking fool of yourself. <laughs> you see, you're in one of your moods today, Gibbs. Suppose that report to you what I came to report to you. Oh, go on. What is it? The mother of 6459 came to see me today. The mother of 6459? Yeah, you know, the one what died. Died last Thursday from a heart failure. His mother? Yeah. Well, how did she get in? That's what baffled me. It did it quite baffled me. How did she get in? Why wasn't she stopped? Why did nobody demand her credentials? Do you want a description? Um, no. What did she want? She wanted to know how his son was getting on. What did you say? I said, how long have you seen him? And she said, I haven't seen him in a year. And I said, that's ridiculous and a bit of a shame, seeing as he's now, well, departed from us. He's what? Told her he's moved to a convalescent home some time ago. Told her that if his son was moved from here to another place, it was in his best interests, only after the most extensive research into his case. We also pointed out we had carte blanche in the ministry. She left quite moved by my recital. Thank you for your report, Lash. No, congratulations. Would you... Would you excuse me? I'll excuse you for the time being, Gibbs. Just cut. <laughs> I believe you know a man called Lamb. Yes, he's on the staff. I'd be obliged if you'd fetch him for me and bring him to room number 1A. I'll be glad of your participation. Thank you.
a seat, Mr. Lamb. This one. <laughs> I'm delighted to meet you, you know. Oh, I'm glad. I, you know, I do enjoy my work here tremendously. You, you do get the feeling that something really important is going on, something really valuable. I've heard a great deal about you, you know. Really? Yes, in fact, it's quite a lot I'd like to talk to you about when we have the time. But in the meanwhile, I wonder if you'd, uh, you'd give me a helping hand. Oh, I'm quite delighted. That's the spirit. Curious kind of thing, isn't it? Hmm? But it's, it's, a, it's a soundproof room. Now, Mr. Lamb, all I want you to do for us today is to help us along with some little tests. Will you do that? Tests? Oh, I'd be delighted. <laughs> <laughs> Um, experiments. Oh, okay. I see. Your predecessor used to help us with these tests, you know. My, my predecessor? Are you quite comfortable? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, my predecessor, did you say? Yes, the, uh, the chap took over for me. Oh, did he? Really? Oh, I've often wondered what he did exactly. I'm glad I'm following this edition. <laughs> <laughs> Have you learned where he is now? Oh, I don't think I do know where he is now. Do you know where he is, Miss Cutts? No, I'm afraid I don't. No, I'm afraid we don't. No. Now, Mr. Lamb, what I want you to do right now is to just sit back, relax, and don't think about a thing. Are you quite comfortable? Oh, yes, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, don't go to sleep, will you, old chap? We're awfully grateful to you for helping us out. It's a pleasure! <laughs> 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 Well, you better get fits of depression. Depression, I want. Would you say you're a sociable person? That's not a very easy question to answer, isn't it? Do you find yourself unaccountably unhappy one moment and unaccountably happy the next? Oh, it's a strange Do you ever do things which you regret in the morning? Oh, regret things I regret. <laughs> <laughs> Are you often puzzled by women? Women? Men? Men? Just a bit. There was just once in the question about women. Staff. His typewriter's broken, sir. 
sir. Broken? Yeah, stuck. Well, there must be an obstacle or something. Look like rust to me. Rust? What are you talking about? There's a ministry typewriter. The new, bought in a few months ago. Well. <clears throat> You've left this desk quite often this week, haven't you, sir? When? When you visited the patients. Oh, I've given up on visiting the patients. It's a waste of energy. <laughs> what an extraordinary thing to say, Mr. Root. Don't Mr. Root me. She's done ever expected to hear you say anything like that, Mr. Root. I said don't Mr. Root me. But I thought that you saw visiting the patients. It's one of the most important aspects of running this establishment. Mr. Root. See, I give you leeway, but I don't give you that much leeway. Yes, sir. Don't think I can't squash you as easy as I look at you. No, sir. As easy as I look at you, Lush. Here's a drink. <laughs> Let me get you some fresh whiskey. Ministry whiskey. Why didn't you even have one visit in the patients? I just had, that's all. Thought you were getting results. Drink your whiskey. Weren't you getting results? Cheers. Surely you achieved results recently. With one patient, very in particular. 6457. <gasps> Let me fill you up. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it was 6459. <laughs> Sir, Lush. You're supposed to call me Sir when you address me. <clears throat> what? Ah, uh, you come for a quiet drink and this is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have something to report. What? I don't approve of divulging official secrets to all on Sunday, sir. Approve? Nobody approve. Well, all the lights are lost. Well, Lush could, she could leave the room. Oh, what an impertinence. This lady's my guest. It's more than you bloody well are. I'm sorry, sir. I do apologise. What is this business anyway? The uh, <coughs> father has been found. Found? Yeah. Found? Oh. That was quick work, kids. I'm very impressed. Yeah. What do you make up the quick work? <laughs> <laughs> kids, I'm truly impressed. Who is it? Uh, a, man, <laughs> a man called Lamb, sir. Lamb, more than that, from the dispensary department. A man, not a woman, you fucking idiots. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't write. What exactly is this? Yes, just tell her what this person has done. A child has been born to one of the patients. <coughs> so you know Lamb, do you? Don't have a fucking clue who he is. <laughs> With respect, sir, he wasn't a very important member of the staff. Well, how does he have access to the patients? He, uh, it's his job, sir. He tested all the locks inside all of the rooms in the building. A rapist, and my own nose. I don't even know what he looks like. Is it right? You don't think these happen things happen by consent, do you? Well, with respect, sir, as I said, he wasn't a very important member of the staff. Well, sabotage, it's almost remarkable, isn't it? Under my very own nose. It is. this... is this ministry whiskey? I must say, it looks... it looks rather excellent. Well, what do you know about 6457? <laughs> Sir, I must advise you, any further discussion on the matter is, is ill-advisable. What do you know about 6457? I know it's dead. Sir, I really must advise you to, to, to consider. You're damn clever, aren't you, Lush? As a matter of fact, a relative of 6457 came to visit me today. What? Lush, the, the matter is closed. What relative? His mother. <laughs> his mother? How do you know it was his mother? She said so. She's a liar. She wasn't. How do you know? She looked like a mother. How do you know what mothers look like? I had one myself. You think I didn't? He didn't. Oh, yes, I did. Fuck off. I'm on my mother's teeth. So did I. Me too. Well, what about it then? <laughs> <laughs>
fighting your dress. Oh, God, I thought you'd forgotten all about it. No, I haven't forgotten it. Every year, sometimes I could just scream. Oh, my God, Dad, screw you. Get off, I'm not in the bastard mood. Everyone's got a neck. You and your net. You love getting your hands around someone's bloody net, don't you? So do you. I'm, I'm not even in the habit of touching people's necks. It was such fun working with you this morning. Did you hear something? Just now? What? I don't know, just... the sounds just now. Nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing. What was it? I don't know. Don't tell me something's going to happen again. No, something's, something's happening. And I know it, and I can't define it. It's, it's ridiculous. How absurd. Mm. It is absurd. See, something's happening, and I know it, and I feel it, and I can't define it. I know what's going to happen. That old fool in there, he sees nothing getting drunk with that bitch. I know what's going to happen. What? You're going to kill him. You said you would. Did I? <laughs> you said you'd stab him and you blamed someone else. Oh, really? Who? Lush. Mm. Lush? Lush is scum, but she's not a murderer. No, but you are. What did you just call me? Nothing. What did you just say? Nothing. You just called me a murderer. I didn't call you How anything. How fucking dare you call me a but murderer? But I didn't! Do you know who is a murderer? Because I'm not a murderer. Root! Root is the fucking murderer. You dare to call me a murderer? I didn't call you You know what that is, don't you? That's slander, that is. Defamation of character. I didn't call you a murderer. You, you tried to incite me to kill my boss, my chief, Mr. Root, the man in charge, you, his own mistress, just to satisfy your own personal fucking whim. Charlie! Oh, shut up. Have a piece of cake. I said have a piece of cake. Have a piece of cake. <coughs> That's my cake! You can't spit out my cake! Fuck off, Ruth! God. You've insulted me! You've insulted the cook! You've insulted Jesus Christ! <laughs> Something's happening, Lash. I don't like it. I feel it in my bones. Do you think I'm going to be murdered? Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> Fucking hell, sneaking up on me like that! Like a bastard snake! I come to hear the speech, Carol. Oh, can't you do it? Oh, it's your prerogative, sir. <laughs> oh, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the staff, the understaff, the patients, everyone. I'm sick of them. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. It's bleeding me dry. Why are you continuing to do it, then? I'm a delegate. Oh, you're a delegate, are you? Yeah, I'm a delegate. You're a delegate. And that bastard there, he's a delegate, aren't you? <laughs> there you are. Delegate of what? He hasn't even explained himself. Explain myself? <laughs> explain yourself. He's not drunk. Can't explain himself. Lush, you explain yourself. No, you explain yourself. Watch it, Sonny. You're a delegate, are you? Yeah. Delegate of what? Who appointed you? Who fucking gave you the authorization to be a delegate? What are you a delegate of? I'm a delegate! I'm a delegate! I was elected! I'm a delegate! I am authorized! What do you want? I just came to hear your speech, Colonel. No, you didn't. You came here to murder me, didn't you? <coughs> murder you? See in your eyes. Guilty. What a thought. <laughs> not a very good murderer, are you? And see it. You see, I did a concert once, and you're not a fucking murderer. You'd make a shit murderer, wouldn't you? Yeah. See? No one here makes a good murderer. Excuse me, sir. But something's happening. And I don't know what it is, but... <laughs> I really rather like it. <laughs> the whole staff was slaughtered, sir. With one exception, of course. Me, sir. One possibility is that one of the doors had not been properly locked, that the patient got out, filled the keys from the office, and let all the others out. You see, the lockster who should have been on duty was absent from that duty. But there's no doubt that Mr. Root was unpopular. 
Two things especially that made him rather unpopular. He had seduced patient 6459, had been the cause of her pregnancy, and he had murdered patient 6457. That had not gone down too well with the rest of the patients. 